When it comes to the production of disaster breakdown videos, research for stories to cover is always ongoing in the background. Sometimes I stumble across something that has very few words written about it on the internet. The listed Wikipedia article that is in relation to what we're going to be discussing today contains a total of just five sentences, not nearly enough to make a full video on. Interestingly, these same few sentences have been copied and pasted many times across the internet, so very little exists about Philippine Airlines Flight 443 online. Other sources in the form of print media have been helpful in the production of this video. With the additional information, a video timelining the events of this accident flight can be put together. The accident of discussion today takes us to the Philippines in East Asia. This large archipelago, home to over 100 million people, has islands scattered over an area of 300,000 square kilometers. As you could imagine, millions of people need to be connected somehow, and air travel is extremely popular in the country. The city of Cebu is one of the largest in the Philippines. Mactan Cebu International Airport is a hub for the regional subdivision of Philippine Airlines. We need to go back to 1987 to examine this accident's events. That year, Philippine Airlines took delivery of a then brand new type of plane, the British and Irish built Short 360. The Short Brothers Short 360 first flew in 1981. It is a very distinctive and boxy looking plane. The regional turboprop only seats 36 passengers, ideal for short-range and low-demand domestic operations. By 1987, the plane had not been involved in a single fatal accident. The short 360 had been moderately successful, with deliveries taking place all across the world, being particularly popular with regional airlines in the United Kingdom and the United States. The small nature of these planes also saw them being an ideal choice for Philippine Airlines. The accident plane in this video was leased directly from the manufacturer, Short Brothers. Because of this, it actually had an Irish registration. In fact, a number of planes in the Philippine Airlines fleet around this time were under an Irish registration. On the morning of December 13th, 1987, this Short 360 would make its final flight, flying out of Cebu to Iligan on the northern coast of the southern island of Mindanao. The plane left Cebu at 6.42 in the morning on that December day, having been delayed by 17 minutes. This was apparently due to the flight crew receiving a weather report from their destination. The flight was to have taken around one hour. The short 360 requires two pilots to fly, but interestingly, sources seem to suggest that there were three pilots on board two captains and a first officer. Not much is known about the flight crew other than their names, so it is difficult to ascertain how much experience any of them had. That morning, the plane was being flown by Captain Roberto Sorenas, other Captain Pastor Cabral, and first officer Abelardo Villarba. We don't know for sure who exactly was handling the flight controls on this flight but we could probably rule out Captain Roberto Sorenas, as it would go on record that he would make radio transmissions to air traffic control. Typically, it is the role of one pilot to fly the plane and the other to monitor and handle the radios. One could make the assumption that the inclusion of another pilot, a captain no less, would have meant that the pilot flying may have been under instruction. The process of elimination here would suggest that First Officer Abelardo Villarba was the one flying. With the available sources, this cannot properly be backed up for certain. In total, there were just 15 people on the plane, the cabin not even half filled. The three pilots and one flight attendant meant that just 11 passengers turned up for the flight, most of them Filipinos, with one Australian. Perhaps one of the stranger things about the short 360 airplane is that it doesn't fly at that high of an altitude. The passenger cabin doesn't even pressurize. The time was just before 7 in the morning. Flight 443 was en route to Elegant City. The pilots made contact with air traffic control there. 
they wanted to get more information about the weather around the airport to see if they could land safely. They were given a report indicating light northerly winds, visibility of 5 kilometers, and clouds at 4,000 feet, and it was raining. Not ideal flying weather, but also not unsafe. The pilots then set about getting their plane on the ground. The airport at Iligan City is very small. With its one 1,400-meter runway, the airport has actually been closed to regular passenger air travel for many years in the modern day, mainly due to the construction of other, more modern airports in the region in recent times. In the 1980s, though, it did serve small commuter planes. The airport itself is situated around 8 kilometers southeast of the city it serves. Assumedly, it was because of the northerly breeze that the pilots would approach and land in from the south onto runway 02. Elegant City is south of Cebu, meaning they approached from the north. To line up for runway 02, the pilots would have had to fly their plane south of the airport and past their destination some several miles, before turning around and approaching in from there. For the pilots, they would have had to take careful note of the large mountains that exist southwest of the airport. There is also no navigational equipment there, the pilots assumedly needed to navigate through visual flight rules. This meant having to navigate around the mountainous region on the flight's approach path. From the weather update the pilots received at just before 7 a.m., they chose to continue their approach. The flight would continue on for nearly 20 minutes with everything appearing as normal. This was indicated by a radio transmission which took place at around 7.17. Captain Sorenas radioed to the tower at Iligan Airport asking about their instructions for landing, also going on further to state that everything was okay with the flight. This would be the flight's final correspondence with the ground. Details are rather sparse, but it is believed that Philippine Airlines Flight 443 crashed into the side of one of the mountains on its approach to the airport, very shortly after Captain Serenus made his last radio communication. Sources seem to be conflicting on which mountain the crash actually occurred, one source indicating on a mountain named Mune. I, however, cannot seem to specifically pinpoint where this mountain is. Other sources would suggest the plane crashed on Mount Gurain, highlighted here. Regardless, these mountains tower at a height of around 5,000 feet. The area the plane did crash was heavily wooded. The jungle landscape made it difficult for any rescuers to reach the reported crash site. When they did eventually arrive, it appeared that they weren't the first there. The area showed signs of looting. None of the plane's 15 occupants had survived the crash. There are, unfortunately, a lot of unanswered questions surrounding this accident. Did the pilots not know where they were? Was the plane not equipped with terrain avoidance or awareness technology? What we know today as the ground proximity warning system was not mandatory on all passenger planes at the time. As already stated at the beginning of this video, the accident has so few words written about it. That kind of nuance seems to be missing. I cannot speculate on what happened in the cockpit in the plane's final seconds, whether or not the pilots broke out of the cloud and saw mountainous terrain ahead of them, or if they crashed while shrouded in cloud or anything in between. You could make the argument, because the crash was reportedly to have happened shortly after its last communication, which was completely routine, whatever happened was rather sudden. Regardless, the accident was marked down as controlled flight into terrain, clearly accidental. No cockpit voice recording or transcript was ever released, no accident report has ever been made publicly available, no pictures of the crash site have ever surfaced, and certainly no videos about the crash have ever been made. This is the first. Philippine Airlines Flight 443 is not the only accident like this that I want to discuss. Though the details are rather sparse, these tragedies still deserve to be remembered. Perhaps one day, more information may come to light. As for the short 360, Flight 443 was the first fatal accident to occur with the type. The plane did go on to have a pretty good safety record. 
it wouldn't be for another 13 years before the next fatal accident occurred. The plane is now old and aging. It is rare to see it in passenger service, with most of the planes now serving cargo transportation. Hello everyone, thanks once again for watching this video. If you found it to be interesting, be sure to be subscribed as there is always a new video on a Saturday. I know I mentioned this in the community tab this week, but in case you missed it, a number of people have been wanting to know when the next rail video will be coming. It's honestly amazing that so many people are thrilled about the content potentially branching out. I have settled on what video I want to make. It may take a few weeks though, but I'll keep you updated on it on the community tab. It is that time of the week once again where I must take a moment to thank my amazing patrons over on Patreon for their support. Their names are scrolling on the screen right now, so if you see your name here, a massive thanks to you. If you would like to support the channel further, you can join the Disaster Breakdown Patreon from just £1 per month, and the link to that will be in the pinned comment below. All patrons get early access to all new content two days before it goes out publicly on. Also, in case any of you want to, you can also find my personal Twitter page in the description of this video if you want to follow me on there. That is where I think I will sign off on this video. Thank you all so much for watching and I will see you next week. Goodbye.